Yeah, I'm more than ready, bro. I'm always ready, man. I love talking about real estate. I'm looking for a paradigm shift from other people. It's helping other people, uh, just like I said, change their mindset. And a lot of people in there haven't done a real estate deal yet. Um, I, think, like, I think I saw like over, over half of the room haven't done a deal yet. So I just want to give them the mindset that they can do this, like literally in the next 30 days, that they can close their first deal. Because once you close your first deal, I mean, the light bulb just turns on and like all the opportunities out there are unlimited. Yeah. Whoa. guys that have done millions and millions literally in real estate right so one of the things that I'm really curious about is did you guys come from humble beginnings uh, I mean I, I come from nothing uh, uh, struggling family uh, I had my son coming out of high school truck driving job as soon as I graduated a lot of my friends are going to college we were partying uh, I went straight to a nine, well, shit, I say nine to five, but a nine to nine, working two additional uh, truck, uh, two additional jobs, cleaning banks on the weekend just to take care of my son. The shit was hard. So, I mean, that was humbling. Just coming out of high school, I was instantly a grown man. I got my first apartment, I think it was like 525 for a two bedroom, which you ain't gonna find that no more. <laughs> but uh, that was a lot of money to me back then. And, 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 and um, when I, at, in 2007, I was think I was 20, I guess you guys must start crunching numbers in my age, but I was 2007, I was 23 years old. Anybody remember the bubble? Yep, I was making 23,000 or $24,000 a year, give or take. They approved me for $140,000 loan, first time home buyer. Uh, anybody uh, saw the movie Big Short? I was one of them guys, I was <laughs> bought a house, making 23 grand a year, and they stamped me like, oh, you're approved, $140,000 house, $1,100 $1 a month mortgage payment as a single dad, and guess what happened to that house? Foreclosure, went back home to mom and dad. That was the most humbling thing ever. Uh, and that's when I got introduced to real estate. My mom gave me the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. First book I ever read cover to cover. Don't, don't ask me what made me start reading the book. I guess it was God or something. That just really changed my life, opened me up to real estate. Uh, did my first deal of, uh, in 2009 for 12,500. Uh, and that was that was a light bulb for me and I had a why my why was my son and fast forward today uh, my son is 18 he's working on his second deal he just texted me he's about to close the deal Monday uh, his, his first deal was what uh, the day before his graduation two months ago he made three thousand dollars on his first deal like he can he can get started right now and like you know Gonzalo you're just an inspiration and we was talking yesterday man like 23 you're just freaking crushing it man like that's amazing it's amazing so uh, like Matt was saying, like, you know, just, I mean, I made 12500 on my first deal, and I was, I was asking myself, I was like, okay, I'm trying to go to the next one. I was not getting, you know, complacent with that, and you just got to keep going and keep going, and don't get lazy, because you can make a lot of money in this business, especially when you start getting passive income from, like, buying holes and rentals and all that stuff, but you always have to have some type of hunger and why um, to take, take yourself to that next level. So I've heard you talk about uh, getting them in a wholesale fashion, keeping them, refining, getting your money out. Can you tell me a little bit about that strategy and sure. also your slow flip strategy? Absolutely, that's a great question. So um, let's talk about a, a deal I, I just, just did. I closed on a condo uh, two weeks ago um, for $10,000. Y'all catch that? That's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot of money. <laughs> for ten grand, so I can wholesale it, right? For for thirty thousand, make I could have wholesale it for thirty thousand, make twenty thousand dollars assignment fee. But I mean, I'm looking at the taxes out. Okay, now I'm in the forty percent or so tax bracket. Or I can keep this thing for ten thousand dollars, which I'm doing. I can borrow $30,000 from my private lender, uh, which a lot of my lenders come from the NFL or pro athletes. Uh, they fund my deals, uh, pay them seven or 8%. And if I borrow $30,000, how much am I getting back at closing? Huh? The same $20,000. So that's tax free. That's tax free, by the way, because the government can't tax me on borrowed money. So I'm getting the same $20,000. 
Now I have a buy and hold asset that I'm gonna literally do no work um, to because it's gonna be a slow flip. And what the slow flip is, is basically I'm taking, I'm just basically buying a property on acquisitions, doing literally no work to it. Uh, I'll market it kind of like an owner financing type deal and I get a non-refundable three to five grand extra money in my pocket that's non-refundable. And um, I'm getting uh, about 875, we're gonna get about 875 a month for that, for that condo on the $30,000. I'm only paying my, uh, my lender, what, 300 or something dollars a month? 875, got $20,000 from the, um, we just say after closing costs, maybe like $18,000 from the, from the closing table. Another three grand in my pocket from the occupant and 875 a month. And then I just go with that bar money, I just go buy another slow flip. So, um, what do you recommend they do to get to that place? Oh man, uh, it's, to be honest, which is really 95% mindset, 5% real estate. Uh, it's really just get, get that paradigm shift where like, you can really do it and execute. So just backtracking myself 10 years, <clears throat> I thought I was doing something when I put out 10 bandit signs. I'm, I'm, I mean, like, so I, I do education as well, just like Matt, and then coaching clients will come in and be like, yeah, man, we put in one offer this month. I'm like, it's not going <laughs> to It's just not going you're not going to get a, you may get lucky by God's grace and do a deal a year. May lucky, but you really have to take massive action. And that was the paradigm shift for me. And, and the difference is that, yeah, I have to put in, you know, to, to get one, one deal, I got to get maybe 50 plus leads in. How fast can I get 50 plus leads in? How fast can I get 10 plus appointments? How fast can I make that one offer to that one gym to get a wholesale deal? And those number, numbers really don't lie. I mean, it may be 50 to 100 leads. So some, depending on how good you are with your negotiations. So let's say if you're working on your first deal, it may be your first hundred leads. So I can get a hundred leads in a week. That's not hard. The leads are not hard. You just gotta market. And that's another animal is uh, people starting out don't market. They go to Zillow first, which is a no-no. They go to Craigslist first, which is a no-no. Or they saw for sale. So when I say no-no, like their primary, that's their primary way of looking for deals. You can still do that here and there, but is you have to market. You know, you guys talk about, you guys are big on cold calling. You have cold calls in place and teams and like that. That cold calling is a great way to find deals, um, but it, it takes marketing dollars to, to get deals. Um, and the, usually the free ways, like Z, uh, Zillow and real, uh, what's the other sites? Um, Zillow, there's a lot of those type of sites, Craigslist and all that stuff. And those are not the ways that the consistent longevity wholesalers that are killing it, doing five, 10, 20 deals a month, they're not doing that. They're doing cold calling. They're uh, making, like literally, they're making offers every day, all day. And, um, and they're okay with getting those no's. I'm okay with hearing a no. I mean, I'm closer to that yes. If you got five no's and you're like, man, I, I made five offers this month and this, is, this shit is not working. And, Five is not enough. Let's get 50 no's and let's talk. Let's get 100 no's and that yes is there. And then he, once you get that yes, you get that first deal and then you just rinse and repeat and you'll notice that it gets easier and easier. Right now, um, I'm transitioning my, a lot of my lenders are pro athletes. So I'm transitioning them because I can feel like I can scale with them better in the in this commercial realm. Uh, you know, I buy a lot of single family, own a lot of single family. But it's like, like one of my guys hit me the other day. He's like, "Yo, because anybody know NFL, the season's about to start, so they get a check when the season's about to start. They get a fat check, and it's, it's taxed, <laughs> but it's sitting in their freaking SunTrust account, the Bank of America account, their Wells Fargo. Like it's sitting there. I seen it. I'm like, and then one dude hit me. I was like, "Yo, I got got a check about to hit up. What you got?" So I'm trying to accumulate my guys and get some of their their, their pro athlete guys raise money. And it's easier, uh, when you got raised money, it's easier to find, it's just, you can just go big and it's, you can just, uh, whoever has the deal and you got the money, boom, you can have a little experience. And it doesn't have to be your money. So right now I'm, I'm focusing on transitioning the, the single family world of my raised private money and moving it over to the commercial world. Um, so we're, right now I'm working on raising five, $5 million um, to move over to the commercial. And, um, and I can pay them a better return too in the commercial world because they get preferred rate and, and they get a cushion on the back end. And like you kind of said earlier, I'd rather have um, a little bit of juice in a watermelon to squeeze than 100% uh, in the juice of a grape. 
because there's a lot more in that juice than that watermelon. So that's where my mindset is now, um, is to, to transition over to that commercial side and I have the, the, the access. And there's some people in this room that raised their hand that probably have 401ks, uh, IRAs, IRAs, 401ks, that possibly have money in the IRAs. Uh, that, I mean, some of my lenders lend out of their self-directed IRA account. And, they, and they're sitting in their IRA getting, what, 1%? It's really, you're really in the marketing business. Wholesalers are great deal finders. And in order to be a great deal finder, you're gonna have to market for properties, get leads, um, expect no's. Expect those no's. And then you gotta have a follow-up system, which we use Podio like Gonzalo and Dom for our follow-up. Um, I remember back in the day, I used to write shit on paper. <laughs> uh, that was my CRM, was my, my notepad. <laughs> And um, I was just, I was missing so many deals, like 2009, 2010, and 2011, that's when I kind of start scaling a little bit better when I read for our work week. Um, but you want to get a CRM like Podio. We use PropStream for pulling list, pulling, running comps, which Amen. Amen. Jump man, jump man, jump man, jump man. Hey, hey. All right. All right, everybody say, on three, say, boom. One, two, three, boom.